Um, I'm going to be talking about intelligence in the brain today. Intelligence. What is, what, you know, what is intelligence? What is it to be? Uh, what is it like to be smart? What is smart? Um, what is the brain? What is it capable of? Um, what is a genius? We always hear the word genius being thrown around for random purposes. So I want to talk about some of that kind of stuff today. It's going to, I'm going to cover quite a few things, and I'm going to try to keep it as uh, succinct as possible, but we're going to try to keep it flowing here. So first of all, like the girls were saying earlier today, um, if you get on your, your little iPhones and that kind of stuff and type in intelligence on, on, on Google on your little iPhones there, you're going you're gonna to find a picture of, of Albert Einstein. <laughs> so is that intelligence? Is that what's, what smart is? Um, a lot of people would say, yeah, Albert Einstein was obviously a genius. Um, but there's a lot of different types of be people and, and a lot of different ways to be a genius and a lot of different types of intelligence. Um, another guy, Stephen Hawking, um, absolutely brilliant. I've tried to read a couple of his books, got into the first page, covered it back up, and then I just kind of put that away because I guess I'm smart or something like that, but I can't understand what he's trying to say. Um, so what is that? what a genius is, sure, you know, um, that he's got his, his niche. He's very, very good at what he does. <sighs> My favorite comedian, a fellow uh, Minnesota boy, um, unfortunately passed away, but uh, Mitch Hedberg, um, he's extremely witty, extremely verbally gifted, was, I should say. Um, you know, one of his favorite, one of my favorite quotes that he, he, he said that it, is that onions made him sad, but no one, one he, but uh, I, I butchered it. I'm not a comedian, <laughs> okay? So uh, onions made him sad, but not a lot of people knew it. So some of that, you know, some of you guys will get that right now, and some of you will get that when you get home. Sorry. <laughs> Mother Teresa. Now, is Mother Teresa smart? She gives her life to other people. She gives her life to helping other people. Is that what intelligence is? Is that what's, what smart is? A lot of people would say, yeah, she tries to help a lot of other people and gives her life to caring for others. Is that what intelligence is? Is that what, what, it, what it's like to be smart? I would definitely say so. And, 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 and through, through all my education and through what I've learned about intelligence and intelligence theories, um, I would say absolutely, you know? And through all I've learned about everybody that I think is, is a smart person, smartest person I know is a, is a truck driver, you know, a professional truck driver. So. You certainly can't base a, per a person's accomplishments um, uh, as to what we consider them as, as being smart. Um, definitions of intelligence. Um, I think everybody has a definition of what intelligence is. Jake thinks I'm intelligent. I don't know why. Um, but basically problem solving, being able to s solve problems, make decisions. Um, what we've learned in school, going through, what is it? 27 years of, I, I have no idea how many years of school I went through. Um, adapting to your environment, learning a lot of things. Is that what intelligence is? Depends on who you ask, right? Um, and I don't want you guys to be reading this, these intelligence theories here, because these are just a select few of, of, of the intelligence theories that are out there. I have my own favorites, um, and as a clinical neuropsychologist, I use, I use um, a couple there that I won't, that I won't promote for for my own sake. Um, but there's a lot of different intelligence theories. We all, have, we all have our own, but these people have made a name for themselves by trying to define intelligence. Um, one of, um, another one of the intelligence theories that are out there are, are the, the multiple intelligence theory. That one's very popular. Um, uh, logical mathematical, Einstein. Um, you know, logically, mathematically, absolutely brilliant, right? You know, um, Stephen Hawking kind of fit in that same role. Um, Mother Teresa, existentially, you know, she gave herself to everyone else, so she's giving herself to everyone else. Um, verbally, um, Mitch Hedberg, a comedian, you know, he makes us all, he's very, very witty, you know, and I still listen to him to this day, so. Um, these are all different types of, of intelligence because we're all gifted in our own way. Um, and the reason I bring this up is because 
intelligence is so disparate because the human brain is one of those things that we have no idea how amazing and how complicated it is. So we're trying to define intelligence, which is something the brain does, but we have no idea what the brain is capable of. Because the brain has 86 billion neurons, I think that's what it says. I went into the social sciences, not mathematics. <laughs> I think that says 86 billion neurons up there and 100,000 connections between those brain neurons or nerve cells or brain cells, whatever you want to call them. And that's actually so, so tonight, if there isn't any clouds out there, um, if you want to look up at the stars and, and, and try to count every one of those stars, count them all, times it by 1,000. That's how many connections you have between brain cells in your brain. So how can we define intelligence when we have no idea exactly what the brain is capable of? It's kind of an interesting thing to try to wrap your head around. Um, and, and we've tried to understand what the human brain is capable of. The 90s was the decade of the brain. Um, President Obama in 2013 were putting together the brain initiative to try to understand what the brain is capable of, right? Um, Henry Markram, overseas in Europe, he has the Human Brain Project. They're basically trying to create supercomputers that are um, um, trying to recreate what the brain can do. And um, actually the K computer in Japan is, is, is getting a little bit further ahead actually um, in trying to replicate what the human brain can do, every, every human brain can do. Okay, and so this, this K computer, this amazingly multi-billion dollar computer that's probably, you know, who, who knows how many times the size of this room, um, was actually able to capture one second of one percent of what our brain is capable of. And it took that supercomputer 40 minutes to calculate one percent of one second of what our brain can do. So wrap your heads around that. And, and you got that brain right inside your cranium. And that's so much more powerful than any computer you could ever imagine. And we're, so we, we have a long ways to go to try to understand exactly what our brain is capable of, okay? Um, and, and, and so remember, 86 billion neurons in the human brain. We got this worm here. Um, I'm not gonna try to pronounce that. Uh, I try to practice it. Elegans, how's that sound? It's worm. Okay, so there's 302 neurons in this, in this, in this, uh, in this worm. And we've been able to, um, to, to replicate and understand the genome of this, of this, of this worm. Um, but we're still not able to understand exactly what it's capable of or recreate what it's capable of um, on a second to second basis. And yet we're trying to understand and recreate a, a human brain, which has 86 billion neurons. Okay, so, so what am I trying to say here? Uh, I'm trying to say that the human brain is so vastly amazing that we have no idea what, what it's actually capable of in comparison with, with um, even just a, a, a lowly worm. So we, we've, been, we've been given a beautiful gift. We have the most amazing, most powerful thing in the world right in between our ears. So what do we do with it? We throw it at a fist. Sure. Sounds like a good idea. We go and get knocked out on the football field. I did my share of that. We use it to smack a soccer ball around. Or we use it as a weapon. That sounds like a good idea. Yeah, because uh, the human brain is about, it's about the consistency of jello. Okay, so then what happens when you throw jello into another human being? Or you throw it into a fist in a boxing match? You get a brain injury or a concussion. A lot of people just say concussion. Um, concussion is basically a mild traumatic brain injury. And a mild traumatic brain injury doesn't require a loss of consciousness. It basically just requires that um, after, after a, an incident occurs to your, to your head um, that you have kind of a, um, uh, you, you perceive um, your world in a different way for a certain period of time, okay? So that's a traumatic brain injury. Um, and, and there's about three traumatic brain injuries that occur in the world per
per, or per in the United States per minute. Um, in, in 2010, there were 2.5 uh, million traumatic brain injury cases that resulted in 50,000 deaths. Um, so the, there's, there's an amazing amount of traumatic brain injuries that occur that we have um, very little awareness of, okay? What are the reasons for these traumatic brain injuries? Number one is falls. Um, the baby boomer generation is kind of getting older, so we, we're falling a little bit more. That's, that's been kind of uh, the, the, the flow for the last few years. Um, we live in Minnesota. We slip on the ice. You know, you fall, you hit your head. Um, number two, motor vehicle crashes. They're all accidents, obviously. Motor vehicle crashes. Um, gets struck, you know, you're out playing football, um, out getting your head um, rung up by a 90 mile an hour fastball. Um, an assault or other shaking baby syndrome. There's just so many different ways in which traumatic brain injuries can occur. Um, lots of different ways. So what can we do to prevent these brain injuries? Um, support for their understanding of the brain. You know, we, we have no idea what the brain is capable of, right? That's what we were kind of talking about. Um, raise awareness. Um, like I was saying, shaken baby syndrome, we don't know a whole lot about it. Um, what exactly, you know, some of the causes of the, the pediatric um, abusive head trauma leads to. We know it's very, very bad, um, obviously. Uh, neuroplasticity. That's basically the brain's ability to adapt. Our brain creates new connections in between brain cells until the day we die. Um, so keep learning. Um, wear helmets. This is a picture of my daughter in her car seat wearing her helmet because she knew I was driving. Very special. <laughs> no, that was just a, it was a joke. Yeah. <laughs> um, stop texting and driving. You know, stop texting and drive. There's no need. We, we, we take things for granted. We take our brain for granted, this supercomputer inside our head. And we're texting and driving and, and drinking and driving. And um, like I said, motor vehicle crashes are the number two um, reason for uh, traumatic brain injuries in, in, the, in the United States. So stop doing those things. Protect your brain. It's, it's, it's the most amazing gift in this world, and you have it. And uh, protect it. Um, some other things that we can do to, to, to help, our, help our brains and help, um, help our brains throughout our lifetime, throughout, you know, getting older um, and help our brain create new connections between brain cells. Avoid a sedentary lifestyle. Exercise. Exercise is actually the number one um, way in which to um, keep making those connections between brain cells those synaptic connections. We keep making synaptic connections until the day that we die. And, and the number one way of doing that is, is exercising. Uh, another, one, another good one is, is socializing. Socializing with other people. We make a lot of connections in between our brain cells by socializing with other people, experiencing new social um, experiences. Um, another one, eat well, obviously, good diet. Um, your brain and your body go together. Your mind and your body are one. So um, take care of one, you take care of the other. Meditate. Meditate. Uh, um, it's a big one right now, especially in the, in the field of neuroscience. Uh, meditate, uh, kind of learn uh, uh, what's going on in your brain. You're going to sit and you're going to meditate for a little while and, and, and try to, you know, start thinking about what, what are we going to have for dinner? What are you, what, what's, what's going on tomorrow? That kind of thing. But as soon as you start to slow your brain down, you're going to be able to understand your brain. And, and it's going to be helpful for you as a, as a way of um, um, understanding your brain. Finally, uh, the brain is amazing. The brain is amazing. It's something, you know, I was trying to reiterate there that the brain is something that's more powerful than anything that we have in this, in this universe um, by a long shot. Um, we all have one. We have no idea at this point what the brain is capable of. We're trying to understand it through all these different initiatives. Um, but we, 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 we really don't understand what the brain is capable of at this point. Um, so take care of your brain. Stay smart. Stay intelligent. Whatever your idea of intelligence is, whatever your idea of staying, uh, you know, being smart is, 
um, take care of your brain and, and cherish your brain and, and, uh, and, uh, and stay, stay your own type of genius. Thank you all. Thank <clears throat> you.